The smart home industry has changed more times in the last five years than Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' line of luxury yachts. I don't have enough yachts. Not enough yachts. And because of all these changes, there is quite a lot of confusion about where to start when building a smart home. And this got me thinking, if I had to start all over again, what would I buy? And the answer is simple. I would buy all the cheapest things, because I'm a reprobate. Cheapest, however, is not always best, and I have tried almost every smart home device on the market. So today's video is all of the stuff I would buy if Jeff Bezos tracked me down with one of his dystopian attack helicopters and burned down my house. The new dystopian attack helicopter from Amazon, because Jeff Bezos has enough money to make you disappear. Your first decision is simple. I have made entire videos about this subject, and basically what it all boils down to is that Amazon is compatible with more things, Google is a close second, and Apple is is in dead last. Apple HomePod, not for plebs. As of time of filming, Amazon are the only company out of the three of them to bother sticking a Zigbee hub into any of their speakers. And this means you have the ability to control what or more smart home products. Not only can you can control Wi-Fi products natively without any extra equipment, you can also control Zigbee-based products without having to buy a Zigbee-based hub such as this Zigbee-based light bulb. Amazon are continuously improving their system, and their routines can now respond to things like this Zigbee door sensor. The bloody door is open. <laughs> or this Zigbee motion sensor. There's a wanker in the dining room. Without any additional equipment. At only 80 quid, the Amazon Echo fourth generation speaker has more smart home functionality than any other speaker on the market. It sounds better than almost any other speaker on the market and natively can control Philips. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. It can natively control Philips. <coughs> Philips. <coughs> Philips. <coughs> Hmm, don't buy Philips, you. It's ludicrously overpriced. And now, a word from our sponsor! You! Yes, you! You look poor and uneducated! I bet you'd like to be some kind of investment banker type, wouldn't you? Well, now you can! Landlord Go is just like Pokemon Go, only without all the chasing dragons about like a belligerent ten-year-old. You can find real properties to buy in your local area using the 3D map and even using this newfangled artificial reality mode to become the disgustingly rich capitalist pig that lived inside you all along. By buying properties from the same category, you can get power-up bonuses until you've got a portfolio to rival Jeff Bezos himself. Not enough yachts. Reginald, try to find the most famous building in your city. Oh, yes, that's right. You live in Loughborough. It's a Sainsbury's. And you're terrible at this game and can't afford it because you bought shares in some bloody park. Not to worry, you're generating rent every 15 minutes and you'll soon have enough to buy that coveted supermarket. Once you're the proud owner of a Sainsbury's, you could put it on the market so that people could buy shares. You could be the richest man in all of Loughborough. But what's that? The apocalypse is still outside. Not to worry, you can send your agent to do your bidding instead. He probably won't die. Probably probably will die. Everybody knows it's every boy's dream to become a property developing business tycoon. So go get yourself on the leaderboard and become the best pretend property tycoon in all of Loughborough or even the world. Landlord Go is genuinely good fun and has taken my mind off the impending apocalypse. Click the link in the description now and get one million pounds to start you on your journey to the top. And now back to our main feature. So you've got yourself a voice assistant, you've asked her what the weather is like 500 times, and now she's on eBay because you're bored. Don't get bored. Instead, develop a debilitating smart home addiction that will empty your bank account and end in divorce. The first and most addictive thing that you will do is get yourself some lighting, because nothing makes you feel more like Harry Potter than switching a light on with your voice. You dork. 
<laughs> but not every smart bulb is created equally. Some are brighter than others, some will give you deeper colour saturation, and some will make you feel like you live in a factory in the 1940s. This is actually one of my favourite ever light bulbs from a company called Shelly. I've got them dotted all around my house and they have absolutely transformed my dining room. They are Wi-Fi based and they will work directly with she that should not be named, but they'll also work with more advanced systems such as Home Assistant. Do you know how you can tell if somebody has Home Assistant? They'll tell you, Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! And I have a lot of different recommendations depending on which type of bulb you're after and whether you're interested in getting just sort of white colours or whether you want the whole disco experience. Rather than going into detail on every single type of bulb and every single type of scenario, I'm going to list in the description a whole bunch of recommendations that I have for E27s, GU10s, and every other light bulb that I've checked out and think is a good idea. Go have a look there. The problem with smart home bulbs is that your family are the worst. They will switch them off at the light switch, and when they're switched off, you can't access them with your face hole anymore, which completely and totally sucks. There are two solutions for this. The first one is murder, and the second one is divorce. Or you could replace your light switch. I have two separate options for this. The first one is for people who are competent with changing out electrics and have the testicular fortitude to do so. And the second one is for people who either do not have such ginormous testicles or live in a rented property and can't swap that switch out. Here are your two options. Option one is to hide the light switch with a blanking plate and then stick a battery powered flick button to that blanking plate so that the cave dwelling simpletons that you live with, when they press that, it will start a she that should not be named routine to turn lights on and off, but will not cut the power to the bulbs. Problem solved. I have these little flick buttons everywhere in my house because I absolutely love them. There is a slight delay between you pressing it and something happening because Amazon Routines introduces that delay. But this won't be forever, it's really easy to install and it's a perfect solution if you live in a rented property. Option two is to replace your light switch with a smart light switch. I have reviewed plenty of these over time and I recently just received some Broadlink switches which are absolutely awesome. These things are really easy to install, it's just two wires. I'm not going to go into the whole you will kill yourself thing. You will kill yourself if you're not careful, but it really is just two cables. It's... I'm not going into it. If you install one of these switches, if you have big old balls and you have the capability, this is a great solution because not only will it respond to your face hole when you want lights to come on, you can also click that switch and have Broadlink start plug sockets up. Let's talk about plug sockets. If you have big enough balls to install a light switch, then you must also have big enough balls to replace your plug sockets. If you do, these plug sockets from BG Electrical are absolutely awesome and they work on the Broadlink platform. Because they work on the Broadlink platform, I can press my light switch and have my electrical sockets turn on, or I can press my light switch and have my electrical sockets turn off. They are amazing. I feel like I've talked about your balls a lot. If your balls are slightly smaller, you can get these Broadlink plug sockets that you can plug directly into your mains electrical output, and these little babies will respond directly to she that should not be named, so that you can use your mouth hole to control them, but also because they are Broadlink and work within the Broadlink ecosystem, you can use that light switch to control them too as part of a Broadlink routine. None of this, so far, requires a Zigbee hub. Here's why you should buy one anyway. He's going on about needing a Zigbee hub. He just said I don't need a Zigbee hub, and now apparently I do need a Zigbee hub. I hate Poe ever. You don't need a Zigbee hub, but you might want a Zigbee hub. Ah, oh, the Zigbee!
The reason is that Amazon's routines do introduce a delay, and therefore if you have a Zigbee Hub instead, you're using somebody else's ecosystem and everything runs locally and far quicker. Secondly, the Amazon built-in Zigbee Hub is still reliant on a stable internet connection. It goes off to the internet and back again every single time you do motion or you open a door. The motion and door sensors work great, but there is a delay, and if your internet is down, they won't work at all. And the final reason you might want a separate Zigbee hub is because Amazon don't yet do anything other than motion sensors and door sensors. Things like flood sensors, smoke detectors, vibration sensors, all of that is currently missing from the Amazon Zigbee lineup. Therefore, if you want to get a proper Zigbee setup, you're still going to need a separate hub at the moment. Things are improving. For this reason, I recommend only buying a very cheap Zigbee hub because you're probably going to stick it in a bin in a year's time and then use the sensors from that hub directly with Amazon's Echo fourth generation or whatever Zigbee based Amazon speaker you have. I reviewed a very cheap hub from a company called Ajax recently and it's a really good sensor kit. It does everything you could possibly want it to do right now and all of the sensors will eventually work with the Amazon Echo fourth generation once Amazon start to ramp up their ability to listen to other Zigbee devices. In the meantime, their door sensor and their motion sensor already work with the Amazon Echo fourth generation. So the Ajax sensor kit and hub is what I currently recommend. The Ajax kit is also a really good burglar alarm system. So not only does it do things like detect motion and turn lights on, it can also detect motion and set a siren going and send a notification to your mobile phone if you have left the house. This is as good as any smart home alarm system will get. At least until Amazon released their dystopian attack helicopter. The new dystopian attack helicopter from Amazon has a murderous rage that cannot be quenched. Logitech have finally announced that they are leaving the smart home race and are withdrawing their Harmony line of turds. Sorry, mispronounced turds. Sorry, mispronounced it again. The Harmony turd. New from Logitech. The Harmony turd. This only... <laughs> This only leaves you with one option, the one that I've recommended all along, the Broadlink RM4 Pro. The Broadlink RM4 Pro can control TVs, set-top boxes, AV equipment, air conditioners, projectors, projector screens, cheap RF plug sockets, infrared battery-powered candles, and basically anything that uses either an infrared remote or an RF remote. You can switch any of these things on or off with that hole in your face, and you can even change TV channels just by saying, change channel to BBC One. This is easily one of the best devices I have ever purchased, and you should purchase one immediately. Before we wrap up, this is just the beginning of your journey. I also recommend Nest thermostats because the open therm technology is honestly worth the extra spend. I recommend the Echo Show for its terrifying spinny head. I recommend the Fire Stick for watching Netflix and for checking out your CCTV footage with your gob. And security cameras are another video altogether. There's still blind motors, curtain motors, and touchscreen panels that I haven't even discussed yet amongst a whole menagerie of other things. Your smart home journey is only just beginning. I will link in the description everything that I think is a good idea for you to buy, including all the things I have featured today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. Uh, these incredible people are my patrons from Patreon. I can't thank them enough. I say it every week and every week I just think this isn't enough. I'm not saying enough. They are the best people in the universe. They made this video possible. If you want to be one of those guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I'll genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. I would buy all the cheap. <laughs> Don't get bored. Instead, to develop. Oh no, I can't do it.
Instead, develop a debilitating. Instead, develop a debilitating. Very difficult. He just said I don't need a Zigbee Hop, and now apparently I do need a Zigbee Hop. I hate Poe Hibber. <laughs> Mispronounced it again. The Harmony Turd. <laughs>